Okay, so now what I want to do is get in here and reduce this explosion. Just bring it down a bit because it is exploding rather large and I don't really want it to push out that much. We can go into the explosive and select that explosive. And let's just start grabbing like the magnitude. Uh, let's pull that magnitude maybe to about 7 for now. I'm just messing with numbers and uh, let's see what we get. I'll just go out this way a bit. See what we get. Okay, it's sort of smaller and we can maybe grab that size down to an even 20. Let's do 18. And let's see where it's taking us. Okay, so it's a little smaller. And what I can also do is maybe pull the velocity in a bit. Just kind of pull everything in. And that should that should do it. Okay, let's see what we get. Okay, so I'm happy with this. This will be fine. You know, it's still rather large kicking out, but maybe if I move this that way just a little more, it won't spread as much. Okay. Okay, so it's big as the grid. So I could deal with that. So what I want to do now is just give these shards some random rotation and trajectory. So let's go into the rigid bodies and select that rigid. And let's scroll down to the primary debris. And let's go all the way to the bottom where we see that. Let's just drag these sliders down. This is the random rotation and trajectory and things like that. So we just want them to have some some difference to them when they in the air. Okay. So that's looking a little better. Maybe if we give them a little bit more. So this is good. I'm happy with that. Hope you are. So that's looking good. Now what we can do, even though we got nice definition from this break, we can bring in smaller shards. Now I do have small pieces in this simulation, but you know, when when things break, tiny pieces break off too. So what we can do is introduce a secondary shard. So let's go to the secondary debris attribute and tick on the secondary flag and let's set the snap amount to one and let's set the crack amount to one and the, br the breeze length let's do two and two we can also go down and give it some random rotation trajectory and rotation and things like that so let's see what we get now we get a lot of small shards breaking off and that's, you know, that's pretty good. So you can see that they are pushing out pretty far. So inside of here, what we're going to need to do is just kind of dampen them a bit. So let's go to the secondary debris dampening. And let's kind of work it down a little until we get a look that we're happy with. And it's still pushing out a little, but... I think I could deal with that because it's a big explosion. So uh, maybe just a little bit more. Just slow them down. Let's see what we got. Okay, so that's that's going to be good right there. I'm just going to be happy with that one. So now what I want to do is introduce the secondary debris to a floor and gravity because if you watch them, they'll just go. So what we need to do is connect them to a, a gravity field and the plane. So what I'm going to do is just in my surfaces tab, just going to stretch out another nerves plane and making sure I have nothing selected in the dynamics. I'm going to go to the fields and drop in a gravity. And now we can open up this blast code window and go to this particles tab. Inside of here, what we need to do is just 
update the list and we can connect this gravity field to our secondary debris and attach the field so let's see if they actually get in here and fall now so they should fall down you should see them below the grid and that's pretty good they are falling so now we also can let's stop this back in the the window what we can do is update list and create a new collision so let's select that floor that we just brought in before we do that let's give it the name floor so we can grab this floor and tick new collision and it's our floor shape let's select the floor shape and select our debris and attach that collision so now once we simulate this we should see gravity pulling our secondary debris down and our secondary debris dropping right down on the floor and that's pretty decent we can see that's happening pretty nice and it's looking pretty good so once you are happy with your simulation let's say this is the way you want it what you can do is actually record your simulation so let's open up the blast code window and go to this first control okay and inside of here you can see we have a record button but before we actually record it what we need to do is go down to this little running man and just open up your preferences in the time slider just make sure your time slider is looping once have it set to once you can save that and then it's time to actually record your scene so let's go ahead and record it so what I'm going to do first is slide down to the very bottom of the control we see we have a a blast data handler what we need to do is set a path so I'm just going to tick this path and set the path on my desktop so just select desktop and tick OK and you can see I have it set to my desktop and now I'm going to set the blast data handler path so tick and now we have it set what we can do is go up top tick this record button making sure we on frame one let's simulate I have mine set to 100 frames if you want to record more make sure you have it set to the frame count that you want to record I just have mine set to 100 for this tutorial so once it's done we could go up top and tick this off button and then we can tick we can reset the simulation and press play up here up here first and then what you should be able to do is scrub and if you can't scrub it did not record so I'm pulling out and you can see I can res I can scrub backwards now so my simulation did record so that's pretty cool okay so what we can do is just select our shards our primary shards I'm just gonna assign this material to it I'll use a blend just hit it with the blend and I'll color it something like the blue and accept that and then I'll just thin out the transparency so just make it a bit transparent I'll grab those secondary shards now and assign the existing material so it's that blend I'll hit that then I'll reset my scene and also hit this with the existing blend so now if I take a render it's gonna look really cheesy right now because this is low settings and everything but you know we can just take a quick render and you can see we have our glass with the uh, material on it it's sort of transparent because you can see the floor there so let's go ahead and just just pull forward a couple of frames and maybe bring that out so we can see what's going on and that's looking pretty decent right there so let's go ahead and grab a quick render of one of the frames that's out and that's looking pretty decent you know looking pretty nice like that in the next part what we can do is actually set this up so we can render it out and maybe even add it to our live action footage so let's take a look at how we can do that